bitch. This is a private area, sir. Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in.
Mr. Whitmer, thank God you're here. Can I take you to Madame Carlyle? Please do. If you'd follow me. I know I oughtn't say anything, but I'm so relieved you're here. Everything's just so strange. Preparing for Madame's funeral, and then she turns up alive. But then the awful business with her brother Zachary, and, and all this security. I've never seen a place guarded like this, and, and, and I dare say I don't like it at all. She just thanked me, said she understood the position I was in. Uh, we had a really good talk about it, actually. So, I just need to check. Yes, it is. You know what we're doing, so don't worry about that. Yeah, I must have done something to provoke her. Shit, man. Caroline. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments, or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by Great, the rather sir. unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A 
hidden door. Yeah, keep it real. Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. Sir. Can I do anything for you? Uh, yes, actually. Could you speed up time so I don't die from boredom? I fear I may not survive an entire weekend in this shithole. Perhaps a brisk walk in the garden would do you good. I said speed up time, not my passing. I'll just go away with you. Of course, sir. I'll come- Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, 
No, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. Of course, sir. I'll come back later. Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitmer, you have enough evidence? No, not yet. Come and see. Listen all day. He pours emotion into that instrument. You have a way with words, Stan. Gentlemen, he gave me his coat and all. Rosie, you need to forget about Patrick. No good's gonna come of it. Stick to your own kind. Oh, you mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games. Never any romance. I deserve romance. Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? Would you I? mind taking a few steps away I, from me, please? I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner, and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like the center of the universe, like a real princess. But now he just ignores her. Well, he's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot. That's what he is. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside. Except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and um, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me. I'm sure of it. Too right she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. Did all the groceries arrive? I heard some of the delivery people were unhappy with the security at the gate. But what is safe with Ethel? She never misses a step. Gossiping and work, both. Thank you, tomorrow. Zachary found dead upstairs today. Death is everywhere. I never thought of it that way. Oh, God. It's such a big responsibility, having a baby. I have to protect it, right? How do you even do that? I can't do that. I remember how it was with the first one. The ones that come after certainly are a lot less of a worry.
I shouldn't gossip. But that Emma woman is a tad too busy for my taste. Tell me. She scolded Mary for not making the bed the way she prefers it. She just discovered Zachary's dead body and was all shook up. I tried to tell Emma, and do you know what she said? She said, things will change around here. I can promise you that. I saw her sitting around, hiding Madame in the back, and then moving Montgomery to the front. She's not right in her head. On top of everything, Rosie thinks she's in love with young Patrick. I mean, that's a breaking heart happening if I ever saw one. Life can be. Believe Zachary was murdered. Why else? Are you... All the tension here. Don't. Hello. That's a little too close. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes, this dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. Anything else I can do to help? Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by Mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca. They had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and the staff were all the company he had. If that's all, I have a speech to write. Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And Mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Excuse me. Emmer Carlyle, 
Can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Is that all? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. How do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Anything else you want to know? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> uh, the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Is that all? Not very th Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. You look tanned. I bet Mother spent the last week at her Cypress estate. Am I right? I'm not at liberty to say, ma'am. Oh, come on. I need to know what's going on. This affects me too, you know. Rebecca Carla, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. 
You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book. Which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Hello, sir. How are you today, sir? Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I mean... How the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. What did you think of Zachary? <laughs> Creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, Father says Zachary and Alexei used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God Daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married Mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreedings her customary in these circles. So, is that it? Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary tops himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Just doing my rounds, Mr. Fernsby. Mr. Whitmer, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. Right. God, I hate this place. I totally get why Zachary was such a weirdo. I'm losing it, and I only arrived. You didn't leave Yeah, well, if there's nothing good to say, then you should hold. Incredibly dangerous situations. 
I maybe actually, we should get back yeah, to... Yeah, <laughs> I should let you go. Yeah. Just having a laugh, dear. Must admit, he's pretty good. What if he believes we had something to do with Zachary's death? Oh, please. He's circling us. I don't see him snooping around your sister. I bet Alexa said something. If I could be bothered, I'd be worried about your mental health, Emma. But sorry, I'm having too much fun enjoying the circus. Did I understand correctly that I should give it to Rebecca in case of your death? Exactly. She holds the other one. I want her to have the file on Arthur Edwards if I die. You're not fearful she will be in trouble if she knows? She will start digging when she realizes things don't add up. Inevitably... Getting her in trouble. I'd rather she knew who she's up against. She's clever and resourceful. Who knows, maybe she'll be able to hit him where it hurts. But I don't want her to get involved prematurely. Hopefully she'll never have to get involved at all. For centuries, the Carlisles have fought to prosper all I'm really sorry, sir. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to let you pass. Order. You'll never come through here as long as I'm alive. Now get the fuck out of my face. As I said, I'm really sorry. I should probably... Take you back to <laughs> right, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Looking good, man. Looking good. You know of any new staff? 
Forget his eyes. They were so swollen, it didn't even look like Zachary. I've never seen a dead body before. Hello, this is Cassandra Cox, Edward's ex wife. Carlisle certainly doesn't know what's going on at your house. Why house, else would she have asked Edward that detective is losing to come here? He seems to believe that Alexa no, has come not back from the dead, and that he has to write oh, the eulogy for There's some make-believe funeral eyes. event. I still have the restraining order on him, so whoever gets this message now that Alexa is dead, better get him under control. Otherwise, I see no other way than to get the police involved. Cassandra again. Listen, somebody at your end needs to act now. Edward is really acting out. He's leaving message after message on my phone. What if the kids pick up when he's like this? This is exactly why I got that restraining order in the first place. The man has some serious issues. If I get one more call, I'll report it. I've had it enough. Are there any gardeners outside you haven't seen before? No need to panic. Oh, 
around here. Huh? See what that was. You're free to engage any tankers that might appear. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Whoa, space bubble, buddy. Oh. Hey, man, we have some weird noises. I'll have a look around. Bloody phone, you coward! How dare you interfere with my life?
Hello, sir. Mr. Fernsby? Mr. Whitbard, you have enough evidence to present your case for Madame Carlyle? No, not yet. Come and see me when you do. She should have gone with a better search. Symmetry. Symmetry. Oh.
supposed to tell you anything. I bet I'm in danger too. I have a right. You're safe here. Don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry about a thing? <laughs> You're not the brightest, are you? This is bad. What are you doing here? Come on, you copy? We've got reports of a male suspect dragging dead bodies around. He was wearing blue or grey jeans, a brown shirt and a dark blue jacket. pours <laughs> emotion into that instant. On top of things, Elaine? Sure am, Mr. Fernsby. Coming along just fine. I trust Mr. Patrick is not interfering with your work. We need everything written. Whoa! What are you doing? Are you trying to choke that person? You're sick! Help me! Please help me! I need some help here! Mission complete. You're a complete maniac! Strangling people! Seven. They're everywhere. Go, get out! It's the Constantine. Shit! <laughs> 